Greetings, fellow Classic TV fans, and welcome to Retro TV Trivia. I'm your host, Pat McCormack. On today's podcast, we have an icon of the Sid and Marty Croft universe. Wesley Ewer has made quite a name for himself in the entertainment industry as an actor, author, director, and producer. But perhaps he and his sister from another mother, Kathy Coleman, are best remembered as the legendary Will and Holly Marshall from the classic Saturday morning sci-fi drama, Land of the Lost. We talk about how that accurate description served to separate the show from most of all the other live-action kid shows of the day. He shares with us about the close, behind-the-scenes affiliation with the creators and writers of the original Star Trek and much more. We had lots of laughs in this interview, and as you'll hear, we like to kid around with each other. So come and laugh with us. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podcast, the talented Wesley Yore. Wesley! Hey, Pat. How are you? I am doing quite well, my friend. And I think you're probably doing quite well, too. I I just found out, well, I didn't just find out, but when we we communicated last, that Wesley Yore flies south for the winter. I do. I, I am in beautiful, and I mean beautiful today, uh, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, for six months. Only six months? Only six months. Well, you know, I mean, you, you got to go back to the States sometime, you know. <laughs> but, I, you know, I, it is, you know, I, 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 about nine years ago, I decided to change the paradigm for the holidays and uh, create a new sort of uh, journey. And, and, and I, I fly south. But then I go back to Palm Springs during the summer, so I'm nuts. I mean, it's, in, it's 120 degrees there, but uh, <laughs> it's beautiful. Well, it's clear that you acclimate well to warm weather. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'm curious, though, how, how used to the name Senor Yor? Do you get used? I mean, do you really get used to that? Or is that we just kind of stick? It's Senor Yor. Well, it, it, well, in Mexico, my name is Hey You. But uh, it's, you know, Hey You. Get, never, never mind, Pat. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, so, sometimes a joke works and sometimes it just falls really say, flat. And this is one of those times. <laughs> I was going to say, when I go down there, they say, what's up? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they say, for me, they go, timeshare, timeshare. Yeah, just an hour and a half only, timeshare. <laughs> and, and you get a free blanket and, and a bottle of cheap tequila. I know. I've had, listen, I've had so many friends uh, do the timeshare. When you get off the plane in Puerto Vallarta, it's called the timeshare line. And there literally are probably 15, to, literally, they're waiting in a line to try to say, oh, we'll give you a free taxi ride. We're going to give you a free tour. We're going to give you all this stuff. You just come here for an hour and a half. And then my friends will go, and that hour and a half will go past really quickly, and, and they won't let you leave. So uh, my secret, here's the secret I found out. Go to the timeshare. Get the free breakfast. Get the thing, and just 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 casually mention. Now, um, now I'm filing for bankruptcy. Does that affect anything? <laughs> and, out the door, free of charge. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nothing like nothing like having breakfast with the really depressed real estate agent. I'm telling you. Oh my gosh, <laughs> there there. I mean, listen, there are. Post and as I'm listen, I'm sure many of you out there know and have bought them. And you can buy timeshares for a dollar because people are trying to dump them. But that friends of mine have been there and they've been basically trapped for the whole day. They said, you know, 90 minutes, but no, no. Oh, I want to go. Well, no, 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 no. Wait a minute, no. Yeah. And they have they have one person for every excuse. So. Um, I mean, yeah, we, we, my wife and I, we won't be using it except for this. Well, oh, I've got a guy. He can work on this. It's it's too much money. i got a guy. He can do this. It's, you, know. <laughs> you know, it's funny because we, we went to Cabo San Lucas about oh, six years ago, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, my God. I don't know. Why does time pass so fast? Um, but, yes, we got lured in, and my technique – Wesley was just to go straight up to the guy before we had breakfast and say, now you know, <laughs> we're not going to buy anything. You know, you guys solicited the heck out of us as soon as we walked through the door, and we're just, we're just honoring your request. <laughs> and he, was, he was depressed. 
But <laughs> did it work? Did they let you out the door? Because usually they have a guy for that. No. Oh yeah. I don't think they had invented the guy for that yet. <laughs> <laughs> because it was just like you can forget about it before you even start, man, and waste don't waste your effort. <laughs> I literally had somebody try to, to leave five separate times, five different excuses, and and I'm not kidding. There was a guy gal for each excuse. I mean, literally like an expert. And uh, so, but, but the bankruptcy thing, it's a, it's a no brainer. That's a good one. That's a good one. I think I'll use it. <laughs> honey, honey, you need to take the trash out. Well, look, honey, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get through our bankruptcy papers here. <laughs> you better have the kids do it. <laughs> I'll touch you Wait, that, that excuse won't work for everything, Wes? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, it's that time. Sorry, babe. <laughs> I'm bankrupt. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's your birthday. I forgot. Oh, I was just too busy with the bankruptcy papers. <laughs> You'll be glad because otherwise we'd be living out in the streets. Happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, it was either it, either a pearl necklace for you or bankruptcy, so you get to choose. <laughs> or prison. <laughs> you know, don't say that. She'll choose the, she'll choose the necklace. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Oh, man. How the hell did we get on this tangent? Oh, my goodness. Because you have a sense of humor, and I was just like, I'm going to play right off that. Oh. Oh my gosh. Uh, you know, it is amazing. I, I walk on the Malacan every morning and the Malacan is the boardwalk. And literally I'm, my, my place, I rented an Airbnb this year for six months and it's 90 steps to the beach. Wow. And we walk along the Malacan in the morning which, and the ocean is there and the whales. And, and I'm not talking about fat tourists. I'm talking about real whales. I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was so politically incorrect. I, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to hell for that one. <laughs> and uh, but, <laughs> uh, okay. but and it's and it's it's the holiday time, so the 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 Malacan is decorated with giant Christmas trees and mangers and the wise men and giant rocking horses and everything in Mexico. It's free. I mean, it's you know if in the states if they had all these displays, it'd be ropes and guards and nope, everything's open. You can go sit on things and take pictures, and the kids can play on the rocking horses, and you can jump on on Santa's uh, throne and stuff and take your photos. It's it's just such a different way of life here, which I just love. Yeah, oh, it sounds wonderful. I'm, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to take you up on that invitation, and I'll see you next year. Uh, uh, oh, you know I, I might be moving. Oh, no. Okay, <laughs> this I'm filing this... for bankruptcy. I was say, <laughs> there's your chance. <laughs> it works. Oh well, then never, never mind then. Jeez. Um, so it's it's been about oh gosh I want to say it's about six months since I had the pleasure of seeing you and Kathy. Uh, at the Croft Con. Oh my gosh, wasn't that fun? It really was. You know, our friend Derek called it the first annual. And I'm like, wow, is there going to be a second? Boy, I wish. I, 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 there's no plans in, 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 in the the works. And it's so sad because it was it was amazing with Sid and Marty Croft both there. And, and um, um it was just, it was, I, I can't believe they're not going to do more of these. The Cross Creed is such a huge, you know, a uh, number of shows, like from the Brady Bunch Hour to, uh, you know, it goes on and on. Uh, Barbara Mandrell show. I mean, other things other than the Saturday morning shows that they had. What was that one? Oh, uh, let's see. Land of the Lost. Yeah, I, I like that one. Oh, I like that one too. Yes. It's kind of, yeah. <laughs> Those kids were great. Oh, some of the finest acting of television. I mean, it's Academy Award. I can't believe they didn't get one. Sure. But, uh, <laughs> but Kathy and I, you know, Kathy and I are are like brother and sister. We were so close. And I've always said that the Crofts didn't just cast my TV family, but they gave me a real life family. To, and Kathy, in fact, has just moved to Palm Springs area. Uh, so we're actually neighbors. And she's coming to Mexico for two weeks and staying with me. And we're going to have so much fun going on boat trips. And my friends are throwing parties. There's a, there's a giant costume ball. Uh, on the Mardi Gras on, the, on February 3rd, everybody has come in costume and Kathy's coming and and uh, I've been, I'm bringing another celebrity who, who I shall not mention. She's coming with us. And uh, it, it's 
it, 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 it's the event of the season and it's it's only it's 120 people max at this private home on the beach and it's just spectacular so uh last year the last one i went is albert einstein i had the white wig and the white mustache and the lab coat and the, i mean i i look like this old curmudgeon uh and it was so much fun <laughs> <laughs> and Kathy, Kathy came to that one a few years ago, and she was Goldie Hawn, and we painted her body with "Suck It to Me," and here comes the judge, and you know it was it was fabulous. She would be perfect as that. Oh my gosh, oh, it, it's great! It, it is so much fun. And she wouldn't even have to dye her hair. No, she <laughs> didn't. We just got like little crop tops and stuff, and, and and before we left, I was I was sitting there painting all these words all over her body. You know, I'll come to the next one. It sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, <clears throat> oh, we're doing. Well, I filed for bankruptcy. Yes. I'm so, I, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, tell her. Tell her at least snap some pictures for her buddy. I will. I, yeah, <laughs> I will. I definitely will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds really really fun. And yeah, it's so wonderful that you guys are so close. And I I know why. I've gotten to know you both, and you're just. Genuinely kind, good people. And so why not make it a lifer? <laughs> Listen, I, it, it's the best to have a, my sister. And then Phil Paley, of course, who played Chaka. Sure. He's part of our triad, and we have the best time with Phil. And, and even Spencer Milligan, who played our dad, I, I, I will call him and go, I go, Papa, can you hear me? <laughs> and he will start to laugh. And, you know, he, he's just, he, he's amazing. He and Kathy really became like father and daughter because Kathy didn't have much of a father influence in her life, nor did I, by the way. And um, they are so close. And Spencer's, even though he left after the two seasons, he, he is still very much a part of our lives. Yeah, that's wonderful. You know, and it, the show and and the enthusiasm for the show is as popular as ever. How do I know this? I just happened to walk up to your guys' table that day, the moment that you sold that lunchbox. Wow. Remember the lunchbox? I know. <laughs> I I had a signed original 1975 Aladdin lunchbox signed by everybody, including Sid and Marty Croft, which I just gotten to sign like moments before. Right. Um, Spencer signed it. The some of the least tax signed it. it. David Gerald. Everybody had signed it, and I put a price tag. I thought I'll just put a price tag on it for thirty five hundred bucks. <laughs> and somebody bought it, and I just talked to Jack. This 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 wonderful Jack Rudd, who's this amazing guy fan. Um, and I, I read it. He came to Vegas recently for the Star Trek convention, which Kathy and I do every year because our show was written by the Star Trek writers. Right. I, and he said, I just got offered 5000 for it. Whoa. So it, it, keeps, it keeps going up. And I'm thinking, hmm. Oh, you know, when I was headed right over there to buy it, and this guy just cuts <laughs> right in front of me, you know. <laughs> and, and then it was like, well, I'm not going to start a bidding war, you know, with bankruptcy and all that. But with <laughs> <laughs> the way <laughs> – this seems to be the theme of the show today. I, I like I like this. I like this. Yeah, we say here's my credit card now. Now the fact that I filed bankruptcy Thursday does that will that affect this transaction at all? Yeah, I love it. It, it is amazing though the 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 memorabilia and things. Um, it, Land of Lost it continues to garner a new crowd. Uh, you know, it plays on different uh, streaming services and. And I'm hearing rumblings about a possible, maybe new one coming in the future from Sid and Marty. So uh, I, I, I don't know what's going on, but, you know, who knows? Um, well, I know. But, that it better include you guys. That's all I know. I, boy, you would think after after the movie debacle with uh, Will Ferrell yes. and Anna Friel and stuff. Oh, my. Kat, you know, Kathy and I did a, a scene with, with Will Ferrell and Anna Friel, which got cut. Because first of all, it wasn't a, a it wasn't a moment that they wrote as a nod to the old series. It was just they cast us as man and woman. Yeah, right. And because uh, Will Ferrell was in the in the original version of this movie, he was parking cars at the La Brea Tar Pits because he was so broke, and we were just getting our car. We had a parking ticket, and and we said uh, we need to get validated. And he goes, ah, I don't need validation. I just found Man of the Lost, and that was towards the end of the movie and a sleep stack egg hack hatched, which was the end of the movie, but they cut all of that part and they ended with Matt Lauer, which I must say was one of my favorite parts of the, of the show. I, I thought it was one of the funniest parts. So I think that was a wise choice. But still 
just to coin a phrase, how rude, which I thought was awesome. Kathy's last line. <laughs> how rude. <laughs> how rude. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. She had, by the way, she ad-libbed that. She did. So, yes, she did. And she was right on the money, apparently. She was right on the money. You know, and, and the thing about it is that Will Ferrell is a huge fan of Land of the Lost. Um, you know, he played a character in, uh, oh, what was the movie, where he played a character named Marshall Will and Holly. Yeah, sounds familiar. Last name Will and Holly. So you're Marshall, Will and Holly yes. on a routine expedition. Of course. So, but when I, I, I went on the set at Universal, I was with Marty Croft, and Will came running over. I'd never met him before. And he he, he left this. He was filming. He just came, broke and ran over with Danny. Uh, uh, Danny, And he said uh, he had just sang the theme song to land of the lost he goes wesley wesley i sang the theme song i know you sang it in the original one and you know he was like really effusive and wonderful and kind and you know so so as a fan he he was a definite fan of the show so that was that made that gave me a lot of hope for the show of course it lost a lot of money and and won the razzies that year but besides that yeah that's a shame because yeah he obviously loved it which meant his his performance was good um But somebody recently, somebody said, Pat. Somebody said recently, and I think they're right. Had the movie come out later, like maybe now, um, and, and and that it holds up better later. People have started to watch it, and since they sort of disassociated it with the old TV series, right? Uh, that it's amazing how many fans it's finally garnering. So, well. Amazing to you, maybe, but quite frankly, not to the fans such as myself, um, because it was just so ahead of its time. It it really was. I mean, I agree. You think about every aspect. It's just wow. Well, the thing that made Land of the Lost, I think, work so much so well was it was a drama. It was a Saturday morning live action drama with a family, a very close family that we'd lost our mom and we were we were in this perilous situation trying to survive with these amazing science fiction creatures and, and the writing from David Gerald, our head writer who wrote trouble with triples for star Trek, Walter Koenig who played Chekhov in the original star Trek. Uh, he, he wrote Enoch, the first episode introducing Enoch, the talking sleep stack. You know, we had DC Fontana and Larry Niven, all these amazing sci-fi writers who were at the beginning of their career. In fact, Sid, Sid told me, Sid Croft, that he approached Gene Roddenberry to be the head writer at one point. Uh, and Star Trek had just been shooting its, you know, three years. And Gene is the one who says, no, I, I'm too busy, but I've got this new writer, this guy named David Gerald, who wrote this script for me, and you should talk to him. And of course, Sid Marty talked to him. And that's why Land of the Lost became a real sci-fi show rather than a Swiss family Robinson with a lost family on an island. Yeah. So, um, well, and uh, that's great. But it, it was a, but, it, but it was a drama. And, and, and the thing with the Will Ferrell movie is it, it became a comedy. It was all slapstick. It was Abbott and Costello, basically. Right. And it, and it, it, it didn't stay true to the, to the old show. So, yeah, I, mean, I know so many people who refused to go see it. I mean, didn't, didn't, they, they didn't, didn't like it or didn't, they just never went. They said, no, we're not, we, we've heard about it. We're not going. Right. Well, and I, I read Kathy's book. <clears throat> Run, Holly, Run, which we got to mention, one of my favorite. Of course, that's fabulous. And, of course, so I got to the portion where she said, yeah, we ended up on the cutting room floor. And I was like, well, there's a movie I'm never going to see. <laughs> 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 Except for that clip, which is still out there. You can find it, you know. Oh, it's <laughs> horrible. It is so horrible. It was a horrible night. It was a horrible, horrible day. Aww. And it was disappointing and it was sad and and um, anyway, well, that's a, that's a long story. It couldn't have been worse than getting stuck in an elevator together. I mean, really? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> We're out doing we, – yeah, we, we go up to Northern California to do a creature feature uh, as a guest on, on this, uh, this, this, this show. We, we were watching the – it was creature feature. We were uh, – Svengooli. Uh, not Svengooli, but uh, oh, my gosh. I know who you're talking about. The, the, the three. Vincent. The, Vincent. Yes. And his, his he's got an amazing production company up in Northern California, and we went up there, and, and the, the movie we, that we, he had us watched was uh, Cowgirls and Pterodactyls, <laughs> which was fabulous. So anyway, in the hotel, we're, we're actually 
We're actually just about to be on a live podcast by Zoom with Sid Cross on his Sunday morning show, our Sunday afternoon show. And Kathy and I get in an elevator with some people, and the elevator stops. <laughs> they have to call the fire department. So I call Sid. And it's the time we're with three o'clock. We're supposed to be on air with Sid. So I call Sid and I'm on the air going, Sid, we're stuck in an elevator. <laughs> he goes, what? I said, no, we're really stuck in an elevator. You know, and uh, and the fire department came and they took pictures. They were all fans of the show and everybody was laughing. And, you know, we were there for about a half an hour. I I know that it, Kathy shared that story with me, which is how I know. But it, she she mentioned also, and I don't know if this was something I imagined, but once they got the door open or were about to open the door, one of the people that were on it with you said, if, if there's a dinosaur out there, I'm, I'm going to pass out or something like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was a guy and his mom, uh, and, and they, they were fans of the show. We did, we did, we did a photo shoot inside the trapped elevator, and, uh, and his line was, yeah, if there's a dinosaur out there. <laughs> I was thinking, and you guys could say, not again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, fat rats. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that would have been great. Oh. oh, my gosh. What fun. I must say we have a lot of fun. You know, we do these conventions a lot, and um, especially our 50th anniversary is coming up in a year and a half. Oh, nice. 50 years. Can you believe that after 50 years that the show still has relevance for many people? And it's it's truly amazing that we, you know, Chris, let's remember this was a Saturday morning show, and you know, it was very vulnerable for a lot of people watching. I mean, you know, they're five, six, seven, eight, nine years old, you know, sitting in front with a, the TV set on Saturday morning with a bowl of cereal. And this was one of the first dramas and a live action that wasn't a cartoon. And I know kids that would have slumber parties on Friday night just so they could get up as a group and watch Land of the Lost. But we have people come up to our table and share these amazing stories with tears in their eyes about oh. how – show affected their lives and i had we had one guy come up to us and you know in the third season we lost our dad and our uncle jack came in ron harper from um planet of the apes played played the uncle jack right and he said he was crying and he said you know and he was a man in his in his 50s and he said I, he said when you lost your dad in the second season at the end of it and he said my family was getting a divorce my dad was leaving us and i i couldn't handle it i was he said i i was i didn't know what to do but i saw on land the lost that your family survived even when your dad left and he said it gave me hope and the strength to get through those years you know trying to adjust without my without my father and you know, you never know as a performer because uh, what the ripple effect of, of things you do, you know, are, are things not even just actors, you know, it's things that you say to somebody, things that you write to somebody, you know, the ripple effect that we we all have on other people's lives that we would have no idea that what we just did is going to is going to create something down the line, you know, good or bad. It's, it's not just it's not just actors, but but as for performers, we say these lines and we're given these lines and we move on. And who who knows what what the effect is going to be? Well, and you, you said it so perfectly because this is why I celebrate classic television and all of its facets because it it offered so much to so many, you know. And of course, a simpler time, but you know, in my opinion, it was the best television era ever. Um, and, of course, you guys were a part of that. And, you know, you also kind of answered my next question, which was, you know, when you were doing it, could you have even for a second imagined, well, Kathy, in half a century, we're going to be out there still finding the love. And, by the way, you guys really haven't aged that much. I don't know how you do that, but that, that'll be another show. The question is, you know, could you have imagined, did, did it ever cross your mind while you were doing it? I'm pretty sure the answer is no, but what's your thoughts on that? It's unbelievable. And Kathy and I and Phil, and we pinch each other. Literally, we <laughs> pinch each other. We scream a lot, but we pinch each other and go, can you believe that, that, that this, is, this continues? 
and and so many other and people come to our table and go, can you believe we're still interested in the show? And they'll bring their they'll bring their grandchildren, their, their great grandchildren now who are now watching the show. And sometimes they're dressed as Kathy with pigtails and, oh. you know, blonde hair and, and, a, and a checkered red shirt. But it, no, of course not. I mean, but the, the longevity of the show is a testament not only to the Crofts, but to David Gerald and the writers, because they wrote good science fiction. I mean, I know, it, the, you know, the effects are, it's from the 70s, so we didn't have CGI. So it, it, it doesn't, they don't hold up like they would if it was CGI, the dinosaurs and the, the effects. But if you listen to the scripts, time doorways and matrices and antecedents and things from the, are they from the past? Are they from the future? Did Enoch, is Enoch, you know, what, what's going on? They never, the science fiction never talked down to kids. They never explained it. In fact, David Gerald said to once at a panel, he says, I told our writers, we're not writing a Saturday morning science fiction. We're writing a science fiction show that airs on Saturday morning. And that's, I think, why the longevity, because the science fiction is so good. It wasn't hokey. It wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't a, a silly space show. It was, there was trauma. There was, you know, we lost our mom. Our sleep stacks pretended at one point to be our mom to try to kill us. I mean, this is a Saturday morning show for kids. And those kind of topics were not addressed back in those days. Right. Well, and there were sprinklings of humor, too. I mean, and not kids' humor. I mean, not <clears throat> certainly not adult humor, but I, I recall one scene where it was the Sleestack King. Was it the King? I'm not sure about this one because I'm, I'm a Fairweather fan. Gosh, you got to no, hate no, 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 it's okay. There, there was the God in Down in the Pit. Yeah, there was. Well, he said, says to young Holly, you have a gift for stating the obvious. <laughs> Yes, that was Enoch, yes. Enoch, the, which which was the character written by Walter Koenig uh, from a uh, Chekhov from Star Trek, and uh, yeah, it was hilarious. I mean, they they showed that at the CroftCon. It was the first time I'd seen that portion of that. <laughs> Everybody laughed out loud. <laughs> exactly. Huh? It was so much at CroftCon. You know, they it was held at. Uh, um, Oh, Renda, California, at, at, at the that David Zimmerich owns, uh, uh, Derek Zimmerich owns this theater, and it's in one of the old 1940s theaters. And to watch Land of the Lost in high def on a giant screen was really amazing. I had never seen it like that. Oh. It was extraordinary to see, you know. Yeah. So, well, that's why I sure hope they do it again. You know, I've been kind of in Derek's ear about it because we're, we're good friends. We're up in the same area here. And uh, he's like, yeah, I, I'd love to do that again. Marty's a bit of a challenge, but I think Sid will make it. <laughs> <laughs> well, in fact, uh, I hope I can't say what it is now, but I, I, I will have some, hopefully some fun announcements with Derek soon yes. uh, about something else. So, uh, But I can't announce it yet, but it's, it's going to be outrageously fabulous. Yeah, well, he, he owes me five bucks, so I'll announce it. Come on. No, 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 I can't. He hasn't announced it yet. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> he made up for it, though. At the event, I got free popcorn. I did. He's amazing. This, you know, Derek Zibrick is this guy that took over this theater and has turned it into basically this community center with entertainment, live entertainment, and uh, events other than the movies that they show the current movies, the old movies. It's extraordinary what he does, what he produces on a weekly basis. I, I can't imagine. And it's this wonderful old theater. And one of the things they discovered, he told me was when he took over the theater, because it's kind of, it's a historical place. Uh, they, somebody said, Hey, you know, back in the forties, there was this thing with black lights. If you turn black lights on, all these paintings came up, came to life. It was what? So they took some black lights into the theater and they turned it on. And in the forties, it was a big thing back then. All these giant paintings along the walls were done with black light paint and everything just lit up. Wow. And, and it's, so they say they, they preserve that. They have black lights there. And in fact, I was in Seattle at a theater and it also from the forties had the same sort of uh, technology with the black lights and the painting. It, it was a big thing back in the forties, I guess, air conditioning and black lights. <laughs> well, and 
you know, to add to that story, he told me that there was a sealed up wall somewhere within the theater that within it were neon lights. Wait, is that, it made, you made me, <laughs> if I got my story all confused. Well, no, I like yours too. Um, but this was the funniest one because the neon lights were encased in the wall and they were on. Wow. When he opened up the wall, they were on. <laughs> and he's like, I've been paying for the electricity for these things that nobody's been seeing. <laughs> I wow. just thought that was I, yeah, awesome. I didn't know that one. Yeah. yeah. Was he able to uncover them? I mean, I don't. I don't recall the the ending of the story so much as that it was just ironic that <laughs> he, found, it was bad, yeah. he found these things. It's like no wonder my no wonder my electrical bill is so high. <laughs> 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 oh man, it's beautiful. And folks, yeah, if you're in the Bay Area, uh, California area, you should go see Derek's theater. It's Beautiful, and what a great place to do the Croft Con! I thought I thought it was just the perfect venue. I thought for a while I was like, "That's not going to be big enough, man." <laughs> it was fabulous. And he built sets. He had the land. He had toadstools and all sorts of things that were Sid Marty Croft and Puffin and stuff, and you know Lidsville, all these things with Butch Patrick and Johnny Whitaker were there, and uh, you know uh, Chris Knight from the Brady Bunch Hour, and yeah. it was it was an extraordinary time. Yeah. Well, again, that's why I hope he does it again. But no, no, I do too. I, I mean, listen, you're preaching to the choir here, yeah. you know. And I, in fact, I just Marty Marty mentioned something recently on some talk show, and I sent him a message. Goes, okay, when when are we doing this again? You know. So anybody that has, anybody out there that would like to produce a CroftCon, you know, contact us and let's do it. Well, yes, and that brings up a good question contact you. Now, I know you, you have your own website, wesleyur.com, and you also have uh, foryourentertainment.com. No, for, for your entertainment, it's, it's an email. I see. For your URE entertainment. See how clever that is? I'm you think so I would have clicked on it? <laughs> Went, oh, this what? is just an email. Oops. <laughs> it's, an email. it's an email. But Facebook, a private message and stuff. It's e Listen, I am so easy to get in touch with. So, uh, and you know, it, it's especially as we're coming up with our 50th anniversary. Kathy and I and Phil we're all looking for for some some fun events. Um, I'm doing a thing in a teen idol from the 70s uh, event in Hollywood coming up for one night only with Christopher Knight and Christy McNichol, um, Greg Evagan. You oh, know, we're having this, what a sweet Nixon, guy. I love that yeah, guy. We're doing this thing at the Nixon Library, a dinner with, with teen idols from the 70s. But for, after that, this next year, Kathy and I have got about eight, so far, eight shows booked. Great. Including the, Star, including the Star Trek convention in Las Vegas again. And we're the only show other than Star Trek they allow in. And that's because not only were our writers Star Trek, but our prop master was Star Trek. And Mike Westmore, who created all the amazing uh monsters and, and aliens in the original Star Trek and, and some of the new ones was the makeup artist, and he was our makeup artist, created the Slee Stack and the Pakuni and Chaka. Um, so we're, we're kind of like the little uh, the little brother of Star Trek. <laughs> well, it, it's fitting, though. They, they mingle perfectly, uh, except that no one at that convention besides Wesley and Kathy have a rubber raft, in which <laughs> you two... <laughs> You too can go over the falls. <laughs> you know what we do, which is really, you know, thanks for bringing that up. But, uh, you know, we, Kathy and I decided this was Kathy's idea, by the way. And that, and, you know, you go to these conventions and comic cons and stuff and, you know, you stand in line, you, you get a picture or whatever, you send a photo with your with a celebrity and an autograph signed. And we thought, you know what, let's let's create an a moment in time and let's have an event. So in the opening of land of the lost, you know, I sing the theme song, which is Marshall, Will and Holly on a routine expedition, met the greatest earthquake ever known high on the rapids. It struck their tiny raft. Ah, yeah. Plunged them down a thousand feet below to the land of the lost. And we, we go over the waterfall in, in the opening credits in a yellow raft. So we bring our own yellow raft, yellow life jackets, yellow oars, 
and fans get into we get put it on the floor of the convention and we all get in and scream and go over the raft the waterfall and it creates a moment and so we thought it, instead of just having a picture you know where you're pointing to the celebrity to stay next to them let's create something wonderful now 10 years ago we started doing this it was a good idea. Now that I've gotten very old, I need an orthopedic raft that ups and downs and lifts me up. I need, mean, you know, it's getting, getting, getting up and down on the convention floor, not stop. But we have so much fun. And we've had so many promoters for conventions that come up to us and go, you know what? We've never seen anybody do anything like this. He said, this is the wave of the future. Right. Right. How perfect. Well, kudos to Kathy. Right. I, next time, though, I would like to make sure that my life jacket is inflated and, you know, you could put it in the water and that way sitting on that hard ground wouldn't be so quite as uncomfortable. <laughs> well, we make everybody sign a release that, you know, we're not responsible if they drown during, oh. the, uh, <laughs> during the photography of this. I didn't sign it. Wait. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, it's okay. I'm filing for bankruptcy. <laughs> I was going to say, you're, I was gonna, you can hear from my lawyer. Oh, wait a minute. He said, nothing. We can't get him for anything. He's going bankrupt. It's all around Me- Mexico. <laughs> oh. you, you know, it's... You know, it's, it's funny because we don't take it for granted one moment of the gift that we've been given to 50 years later to, you know, to, to be remembered and you know, people spend their hard-earned money to come and and go to these conventions and and meet celebrities and things. And it, it is that's why we want to always go the extra mile. We want to provide something that is bigger and better and more memorable than just a um, uh, you know a brief a brief hello to to somebody that you know. Because you have to understand that when we go to these conventions, we get to see our heroes too. I mean, we get to suddenly we're sitting, you know, I'm sitting next to Lou Ferrigno for four days or, you know, uh, Gil Gerard, yeah. you know, I, I, you know, and, and I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe that, you know, I'm going to have lunch with Gil Gerard. <laughs> that, I mean, it, it's crazy, you know, so. Um, Nothing funner than seeing a star be starstruck. I, that's what I always say. Yes. And it happens. I mean, we did the show in Hollywood recently, and Charo was across from us doing "Gucci Gucci Goo." Mm-hmm. So at the closing, one of the closing, that's when we did. I think it was the wrap of one of the years of Land of the Lost. Every you know, the Crofts worked with everybody. So Charo came onto the set of Land of the Lost, and she was chasing Phil the Pakuni and Chaka <laughs> around, going "Gucci Gucci Goo." Nature him running around the jungle. We had Stallone show up. We had Elton John show up. We had the Cher came. Um, you know, our uh, Land of the Lost set back in the day was two giant sound stages: one with a jungle, a lagoon, and the exterior of our cave. The other was the interior of our cave. And this, the largest blue screen, because uh, it's green screen now, but it was blue screen back then, chroma key. And, you know, the floor was painted, the whole half of a soundstage. And people would just, I mean, all these celebrities would just come wandering through because of the crofts. Right. So it, it was quite an amazing uh, a, a event for us because I was doing Days of Our Lives at the same time. I was playing Mike Horton. And so, I, I you know, I, I would shoot in the morning. I'd do Days of Our Lives in the morning for three years. NBC let me do it because they were both NBC shows. So I'd do all my scenes on, on Days of Our Lives. And um, and then I'd go to, to get, you know, get it. I, I didn't even, in fact, when I got the job, I didn't even have a car. I had to go buy a car. I, it was all happened fast. So in the morning, I'm crying that my girlfriend's leaving me and the mafia's after me. And I'm having all these sexual problems and stuff on the soap opera. In the afternoon, I'm going, run, Holly, run. There's a dinosaur. <laughs> and, and boy, am I warmed up. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I've got to tell you, the, the cast of Days of Our Lives hated me because I literally was the newbie, and suddenly I got another TV series for NBC, and I got they let me film all of my scenes in the morning. So they had to wait around for me to film my scenes, and then I got to leave early. And they were like, oh, they had to wait. <laughs> well, thank God you were known as One Take Wesley. I mean... There you go, babe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> it really was. That yeah. would be pressure, I think, you know. It was a lot of pressure. Wow. But, but boy, I loved those days on Days of Our Lives. And, that, you know, and, and in fact, Deidre Hall, 
who is still on is, is Dr. Marlena. Right. Uh, she was on a Sid Marty Croft show, Dining Girl Electro Woman. Oh, yeah. And so she came. I'd never met her before. And I'm sitting outside at, on a break in Land of the Lost. And Deidre comes over and says, you're Wesley. You're I go, yeah, yeah. And she said, so I'm playing. I'm over here you know, with the Crofts, you know, Dining Girl. And, and uh, she said, I've got an audition for Days of Our Lives. And I go, I know what they're looking for, Deidre. Because I, I've been hearing the producers talk about, you know, how to audition for it and what they were looking for. And so I gave her some pointers. On, uh, we, I think we ran the scene, her, her sides that she had for her audition. And, and she, of course, she got the part and she's been become the, you know, the star of Days of Our Lives for, for years now. And, and not that I got her the, the job, but I, I certainly gave her a slight edge up. And, you know, so it, it's, it, it's amazing sort of the, the, the circle of life. The circle. Never mind. Uh, so, <laughs> well, I was going to say you better. You, I just held up a lion cub. I don't know where I got it from, but <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. I was going to say you're going to send Deidre a bill eventually. I would assume. Thank you. I, I, I was opening at Harris in Lake Tahoe. Uh, I was opening for Bill Cosby. I used to. Uh, he and I used to share that. <laughs> No, it's, I did. I had nothing to do with Bill Cosby's life. Okay, yeah. but he and I shared the bill at Harris, and uh, and I actually opened. I opened one of the uh, the production. We had a huge production with with girls, singers, and dancers, and sets flying in and costumes. But we opened with a video, and it was a scene that Deidre and I did. And I remember it was a, it was a dramatic scene. <laughs> And I'm standing backstage. I've got a 22 piece orchestra that about you know I'm high, and the girls are, are are flown in. They're up up and scaffolding, about to be flown in for the opening number. And I hear somebody. In the, it's very quiet in the scene with Deidre Halls, and you hear somebody in the audience go, "Change the channel." <laughs> watch. I was mortified. Needless to say, we cut it after that. <laughs> it, it never saw the light of day again. <laughs> I'd be like. Did, did Bill plant that person? I wonder. <laughs> oh my! No, he was the. You know what? What is so sad to me is he was so kind to me because mm-hmm. he didn't have a reputation for being very kind right. to people he worked for. But opening night, Harris, I was I had equal billing with Bill, and I'd never met him, and I you know had all these girl dancers and singers and everything. We I had we had forty seven costume changes amongst the five of us. And I had seven and they had 10 each. And so they call 15 minutes and I'm opening. I've never done this act in front of anybody. And I'm opening for 3,000 people sold out at Harris. And so, um, and I'd never done nightclubs before. I'm terrified. So I'm in my, I'm in my opening outfit, which is a rhinestone tuxedo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Beautiful, by the way, beadwork. I'm telling you, it was sparkly and fabulous. And so everybody's gone. The girls are being rigged up for their flying in number and stuff. And I'm all by myself. The choreographers in the audience, everybody's gone. I go knock on this door. And he opens the door. He's in his jogging suit with his cigar. And I go, hi, Mr. Crosby. I'm Wesley Year. He goes, I know who you are. Come on in here. And so I go into his dressing room. And I have 15 minutes. And he sits down on a chair. And I Remember, rhinestone tuxedo. I get on my knees. I grab his legs. I look up at him and go, I am so scared. (laughs) Oh, no. He started to laugh so hard. He said, let me tell you something. He said, I I said, Mr. Cosby, I've never done this. He said, how many minutes are you doing tonight? I go, I'm doing 45 minutes. He goes, okay, I'm doing 45 too. And... uh, I said, I said, I've never done this in front of, you know, he said, let me tell you something. He said, when I did I Spy with Robert Culp, he said, I was a stand-up comic and I never, I never, you know, I, I didn't ever done television before. So every time like a light would blow or something on the set, I'd get, you know, like get startled. And he said, Robert Culp took me aside and we explain everything. He says, I'm going to take good care of you. Don't worry about it, kid. And I swear every night he watched my act. He gave me notes. And in fact, when he came on and go, you know, ladies and gentlemen, Harris Hotel is proud to present Bill Cosby and the orchestra would be playing and he drags out his stool in his jogging suit and, and he would then say, oh, let's bring back Wesley's daughters and the girls would come out and he had never, ever introduced, uh, brought back an opening act before, again. And he said, no, Wesley, you Wesley, and I'd come out and the 3,000 people are screaming. He puts down the microphone 
and they're all yelling and screaming and all, you know, it was great. And he talks to me like we're, we're backstage Friday. He goes, so how'd it go tonight? I go, well, I did what you told me. I, I, I told that joke. I, I, I waited for this and I, 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 you know, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, I know I was watching ladies and gentlemen, Wesley, you are. And then he would do his act. Um, so when all this obviously came down, it was a terrible, terrible disappointment. And, uh, I just, you know, there's just no words for, for that behavior. So, well, maybe the words are, you know, even within the most devious mind, there's still, in fact, a great deal of room to be good and supportive like he was for you. Yeah. It's so hard to wrap your head around it when your experience was so positive and then, and the evilness that, that happened. And yeah. uh, it's, it is so hard. And I, you know, Anyway, well, I had the choice. I was given the choice. I could have opened for, uh, there were a couple, I, I was given the option. I think Jerry Lewis was one of them. <laughs> that would have been fun. Worse. I hear he was, he was just a pussy cat. Yeah, that <laughs> so, would have been worse. <laughs> ow, ow. <laughs> and, uh, and somebody else, I think it was a country western singer. Um, but because uh, we opened when I opened, it was uh, Glenn Campbell and Tanya Tucker were the opening, were the act, right? The, the stars right before us. Boy, times have changed every day. Yeah, boy. Well, at least you have it, Wesley. You're still the stand-up, charming, wonderful guy that I've gotten to know over the years. And, you know, speaking from the fans, we, we appreciate that, and both you and, and Kathleen. I mean, uh, I just love you both. And it's just, like I said, it's been such a great experience for me getting to know you guys better. And I, I'm honored to consider myself your friend. I truly am. Well, thank you. And it, it, it ditto, ditto, ditto. So thanks for having me on the show. And, you know, I mean, thanks for doing what you do. I mean, keeping alive, uh, you know, you, all of these memories. And, you know, I, I, I listen to your show and, and all the people that you have on that, you know, I, growing up as a kid, like, you know, like from the My Three Sons kids and, right. and all those people. I mean, I get to listen to the, I mean, the, those were my idols. I got to tell you, like Billy Moomy from Lost in Space. When I was a kid, I I wanted to be him. And and Johnny Whitaker, when I wanted to be him. And when he, especially when he did the Disney stuff with, uh, you know, Huckleberry Finn and the Littlest Angel and all that stuff. And and then suddenly to call these guys friends in in my in my latter years, um, it's you know it's. I'm a kid from Mississippi, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. You know, I had nobody, nobody in my family was in show business. They thought I was nuts. And to come from that environment to, to suddenly be sitting next to, you know, uh, some of these amazing, amazing celebrities uh, that we, you know, we get to interact with and stuff. It, I, I pinch myself. I mean, literally, Lou Goss, I'm sitting next to Lou Gossett Jr. for gosh sakes and thinking, how the hell did I get next to him? Well, see, and again, that's, that's one of the things I like most about you, Wesley, is you're so darn humble. But but we love that about you, you know? And and again, let's face it, it doesn't matter where you were from. You had the talent and the looks. You had the goods. And you could back it up. So to alleviate folks that feeling of emotional bankruptcy, we shall now <laughs> end our interview with the wildly entertaining Senor Yor, or as he is known as, Donde es del baño, Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Funny. Feliz Navidad, my friend. Feliz Navidad, mi amigo. <laughs> okay, thanks, Wesley. Adios. There you have it, another retro TV trivia in the books. Be sure to check out WesleyEwer.com to keep informed of all the happenings with him and his Land of the Lost family. Do come visit with them wherever they're appearing, and be sure to ride the raft over the falls. I'll leave the links to follow Wesley on all his social media platforms. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this podcast and leave me a positive rating and review. You can also find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at Golden Rage of TV, and on Twitter at Golden Rage of TV One. This is your host, Pat McCormack, and thanks for listening to Retro TV Trivia.